everyone. Happy December and welcome to this month's episode of TPAC TV. And as you can see, the holidays have arrived here at TPAC and War Memorial Auditorium. And that's what this entire episode will be dedicated to. We have a lot of great segments planned for you, including going to Nashville Repertory Theater to talk about A Christmas Story. We have the executive producer of Peter Pan and Tinkerbell, A Pirate's Christmas, joining us. And we're also going to speak with Rick Michael from Sinatra Forever. But before we get to all of that great stuff, I wanted you guys to know about the upcoming productions we have coming this month. Nashville Ballet is doing Nashville Nutcracker yet again here through December 23rd. Also, the first Thursday of each month, Nashville House Concerts across the street at War Memorial Auditorium. This month is Gretchen Wilson, Marcus and Levi Hummin, New Reveille, and more. So you'll definitely want to check that out. We hope to see you there on Thursday. Now we're gonna go over to see our own Lisa Kennedy speaking with Jack E. Chambers and Megan Murphy Chambers from National Repertory Theater's A Christmas Story. Take it away, Lisa. Hi everyone, I'm Lisa Kennedy for TPAC TV and we are here on the set of National Repertory Theater's A Christmas Story, which is running through December 22nd at TPAC. And I am here with two people from the show that have a very special connection not only are they married in the show, playing the mother and the old man, but they're also married in real life. Um, Megan Murphy Chambers and Jack Chambers, thank you so much for being here today. Good morning, for thank you for having us. So let's get started. So Christmas Story is such an iconic movie and the stage production is a Nashville favorite. It's been happening here for 10 years. What do you think has people coming back year after year to see this show? I think because people already love the material and they love the movie, I think the stage show surprises them in a lot of ways. The interactivity element of it, the sweetness of it, the fact that they can bring literally anybody of any age and they're going to enjoy it. Even if somebody's coming for the first time, it makes them realize they want to continue to come back and I think it resonates with people in a really specific and real way this time of year. I think it's because it is kind of a memory play. It's, it's a man looking back and he's narrating his childhood and that's something you get a little bit of in the movie with the narration, but you don't really get to witness it happening as someone looking back on their lives. And I, I did, the first time I came to see the show, I cried like a baby late in <laughs> act two. And it was out of nowhere, I did not expect it. And I thought, I wanna see this over and over again. I wanna wrap this around me for the holidays. It's a really lovely balance of nostalgia and hilarity, which is kind of rare. It's a really, really special show. Absolutely. So now both of you have been in the show now for three years. This is my fourth. This is your fourth yes. year. And, yes. and this is your third. Yes. OK. So what keeps bringing you guys back to the character of the old man and the mother? What keeps you coming back to play these parts in this show? It's kind of impossible to have more fun on stage than we do <laughs> here. It really, I mean, it's a, you get done with the show and you feel tired. Like you feel like you have done something because it's a tremendous like physical effort. But my God, it is the most fun in the world. And they're such talented people. And we get to work on this beautiful set with these super, super capable crew members and technical staff. And it's just, it's the best job in the world. I can't imagine saying no to this. And I grew up, you know, like a lot of people my age, I grew up on the movie, you know, all the way through. And I am basically playing the old man as my own grandfather because it was his favorite <laughs> movie. And so getting to take part in this and do it with Megan and get to spend that holiday time together that if we're doing different shows or something else, we don't get to spend. Yeah. And it's just getting to kind of act this out and have this, you know, this, this fun, this, you know, this experience with these people over and over again. And I'm happy to keep doing it. It's special. That's wonderful. Um, so coming back to A Christmas Story here at Nashville Rep, um, for fans of the movie who may have in the past 10 years um, not gotten to see the show, if they're coming this year, what should they expect? If they're fans of the movie, what's different? What's the same? Is there a slide? There is a slide. And if you are a very lucky audience member, you get to ride the slide. Oh, <gasps> that's amazing. We have two uh, what we refer to as civilian sliders every night uh, but that is not the only interactive part of the show i think that's what surprises people the most when they come because of course they get to see all their favorite moments you've got the bunny suit you've got 
the flag old man poles. cursing, you've got getting stuck to the flagpole. <laughs> All of your favorite elements are there, along with a lot of additional things that make it feel very, very theatrical and very immediate uh, that you get to participate in. Uh, a lot of it from the from the comfort of your own seat, uh, but some of it is much more up close and personal with us here, and it is. I think it really surprises and delights people that they get to take part in the entire world. You know, if you watch the movie and you listen to the narration, that is the story that you are being told yeah. from the stage. It's like, welcome, hey, here's a story. It goes like this, and that's what draws people in. That's what drew me in yeah. when I came. And what a wonderful story it is. Thank you, Megan and Jack, for being with us. A Christmas Story at Nashville Rep runs through December 22nd here in Johnson Theater at TPAC. You can get your tickets at tpac.org. Thank you, Lisa. That looks like so much fun. I hope I'm the lucky audience member that gets to ride down that slide. You do not want to miss A Christmas Story. They are in their 10th and final year right here at TPAC. Moving on, have you guys ever wanted to go to Neverland? And I don't mean Michael Jackson's ranch. Peter Pan and Tinkerbell, A Pirate's Christmas is right here at TPAC December 13th to the 23rd. And we'll be speaking with their executive producer, Chris Lithgow, and our very own Christy Dorch. Hello, my name is Christy Dorch and I'm the Executive Vice President of Programming and Sales for the Tennessee Performing Arts Center and I have the great pleasure of interviewing today the wonderful Chris Lithgow. Hello Thank Chris. You. Thank you. Um, so I want to start with a question that you're probably not prepared for which is I think everyone needs to understand the heritage and regalness of your name, why it's familiar to them. Can you tell us a little bit about your family? Sure, um, you know 20, well, 18 years ago my family came over with the TV shows American Idol uh, and then created So You Think You Can Dance four years later. So we have a family history of doing television and now we're moving into theater. Fantastic, and a word we've been throwing around a lot at TPAC uh, is related to you coming over. Can you talk to us about Panto and what that really means? Absolutely, so Panto is the first uh, look, if you like, for any child in the UK. It's a 300 year old tradition, always based on fairy tales. It's musical theater, so it's, it's that in essence, but it has an interactive component. So we don't tell the kids to be quiet and, and, and sit down. We really ask the whole audience to boo uh, Captain Hook and cheer for Peter Pan. So um, it's, it's really a way of engaging new audiences uh, and getting kids into the arts. Well, but having had the luxury of seeing one of your Panto productions, which was wonderful, um, I have to tell you, I was a little skeptical about the it's for all ages thing, because people love that phrase, sure. but it is. Can you explain to everybody what about your show is different and what they can expect to see that makes it that way? Sure, so all our shows are written for the location. So this is Nashville-centric, uh, all the jokes are, are, are Nash gonna be Nashville jokes, and it really plays the script to adults. So although it's Peter Pan, which is essentially you know, for kids and maybe the kid within y yourself, um, the script is written for adults. Um, and, so it, and we also put pop songs in it that are from different generations. So we have songs in it from the 50s through to the, for the grandparents, through to the 80s for the parents, and then obviously today's songs. So we have Bruno Mars in it for the kids, that, you know, and they get to sing along. Um, and it's just a lot of fun, really. And, and, and as you've seen, Christy, it truly is for all ages. I have, and so another aspect that really brings that all ages to light is that you do have this amazing star-studded cast that appeals to so many different people and is recognizable by so many different generations. Can you talk a little bit about the cast? Yeah, absolutely. We, what a wonderful cast. It I mean, is. We're, we're, we're very blessed to have that cast. Um, and they were so excited to get to Nashville. I think Nashville's a great selling point when we, when we bring cast members over from Los Angeles. We've also got cast members who are based in Nashville. But the cast we have, um, playing Captain Hook, John O'Hurley, known uh, as Jay Peterman from Seinfeld, Elaine's boss. Um, I couldn't think of a better Captain Hook. Yes. I mean, he is absolutely unbelievable. Um, and you know, through to Garrett Clayton, who plays Peter Pan, who's at Disney, was, uh, was on Grease Live, was in Disney Teen Beach movie. Uh, we've got um, the wonderful Tegan Marie, who is, for me, going to be a huge star, um, you know, huge potential. Um, Diana DeGarmo uh, from our American Idol days. Um, a Nashville favorite, for sure. A Nashville favorite, for sure, right. Um, she really is, um, you know, she stops, I think she's going to stop the show. She sings, I'm going to give too much away, but she does a tribute to Aretha Franklin. And, you know, that's no messing around. I mean, she is unbelievable. 
Um, and then we have our, every panto has a, a comic, um, a kind of narrator that guides the audience through the show. Um, and it's a gentleman called Ben Giroux, who uh, plays more to the younger audiences. He's in a, in a show uh, on Nickelodeon called Henry Danger. Um, but he is fabulous. He really is. The improv is, is, is amazing. Oh, he's spot on. I, having yeah. the luxury to sit in rehearsals, he is spot on. Yeah. So as we wrap this up, and I think, thank you so much for coming out to do this with us. Sure. What is the one thing that you would say to Nashville audiences that you brought this to Nashville because? I brought this to Nashville because I believe, and we believe, that uh, today the family needs something to come back together again. We always believed that American Idol, one of the big components of American Idol, why it was so successful, was because there was a need at the time on television for a show that brought the family together, where the grandparent, the parent, and the kid could all watch together. They might like different singers, but they all watch the show together. And that's exactly what this theatre is. So we're kind of telling parents to throw away YouTube for the kids and Fortnite and, and bring them down and get them into the theatre and, and make a family event of it. In our holiday tradition, every year, uh, come and see the Panto at TPAC. That's fantastic. Thank you so much for being here, and thank you so much for bringing this wonderful production. We're very, very excited. Thank you for inviting us. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us, Chris and Christy. And don't forget that Peter Pan and Tinkerbell of Pirates Christmas will be here December 13th through the 23rd. Tickets are available now at TPAC.org. Here at War Memorial Auditorium and TPAC, we really do have something for everybody this month. Our very own Tracy McDonald spoke with Rick Michael from Sinatra Forever about his big band performance coming on December 15th. Hi, my name is Tracy McDonald and I'm excited to be here today with you to give you a little insight to a show that's coming to War Memorial Auditorium on December 15th. It's called the Sinatra Forever Show. And today I'm gonna to be joined by Rick Michael. And he's joining us now via Skype. Hey Rick, how are you? Thank you, welcome to my home, Tracy. Thanks for having me on your show here in lovely uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm so excited about this show. I've been doing a little research on you, and I was wondering if you could share with our audience how you got started and your mother's influence as far as your Frank Sinatra tribute. Sure, sure. I, I um, do over 200 voices, and I, I asked my mom when I was a teenager, I said, well, who, what impression or what voice would you like me to do? And she said, well, how about uh, Frank Sinatra? And I said, I, I kind of knew who he was, but I'm a teenager. I into rock and roll, but went down to the basement, got an old 33 and a third album. It, it was Nelson Riddle's song for Swingin' Lovers, and I put the first track of the, so of the album on my Panasonic reel-to-reel that I got from my bar mitzvah. That's right, a Jew doing an Italian. <laughs> anyway, so I, I go back and forth, and I'm, I'm, I'm listening for about 30 days, and I, all of a sudden uh, I'm I getting the timbre, the timing, and the, and the tonality of Frank Sinatra and the phrasing, and I'm singing Frank Sinatra all around the house, and it was, uh, it was a glorious thing. So how did you go from, as we all have stood in the house with our spoon singing into a, a mirror, how did it transition from that to literally this nationwide tour that you're on? Uh, from that point, uh, a, a gentleman from the, uh, the uh, college in San Diego saw me, and he said that I have a big band I'd love you to sing with. You sound, you know, like Frank Sinatra. I go, well, all right. And I started, and... Ended up recording in a studio in 81, 82. I did two albums with a live big band. The, the configuration we're doing at the War Memorial, which is the second year that I'm coming back with a 24-piece orchestra, 12 strings and a 12-piece big band. And I'm looking forward to uh, sharing uh, with the audience uh, life experiences that Sinatra had with these songs. Uh, he always mentioned the uh, uh, arrangers and composers and lyricists and so I'll be doing the same and uh, we've got great classic songs like Lady is a Tramp, um, I Got a Crush on You, Come Fly With Me, uh, All the Way, That's Life. I'm even going to throw in some uh, Christmas music. I, I've been asked to do a couple of Christmas tunes and I'll, I'm going to bring Sinatra's best friend 
Dean Martin in. Oh, Dean, I'm going to sing Let It Snow, Let It Snow, Let It Snow. <laughs> and a little crooner by the name of Mr. Ben Crosby doing Black Christmas, of course, the biggest selling song of all time. Well, we're so excited that you're going to be here during the holiday season. Uh, for more information about this show and other holiday entertainment, here at the Tennessee Performing Arts Center and the War Memorial Auditorium, you can go to tpac.org and look us up, see what you'd like to bring your family to and enjoy the holidays. Thanks again, Rick. Thank you, I did it my way. Thank you so much, Rick and Tracy, for joining us. Sinatra Forever will be here December 15th with that full 24-piece orchestra and a great dance floor. You can get your tickets now at WMARocks.com. Well, that's our full December episode for you. We hope that you guys enjoyed it, and we always like to end with something we're excited about. I love, in December, always going out to Opryland Hotel and seeing all of the lights through all of their different atriums. I hope you guys can get out there and see it, too. Get ready, we'll see you in 2019, and you might want to eat before our next episode because it's probably going to make you pretty hungry. We'll see you then. Bye.